Good morning everyone, my name is Angie Phillips, I'm a graphic design consultant and this morning I'm going to talk to you about logo design. So, if an alien flew in from outer space, what would they think about the Coca-Cola logo? Everybody knows it, it's one of the top six favourite logos in the world, but it wouldn't mean nothing to that alien. He wouldn't know whether to drink it, use it or pour it down the sink, mainly should be pouring it down the sink I would imagine. So. Your logo represents your brand beliefs and your promises. It doesn't mean anything until your customer has experienced your services and understands what you do. And then it's going to be associated with how you've made them feel. So your logo is really important to capture everything about your business. Your logo must have impact. It, uh, it must impress <coughs> and create interest, so it's an initial impression that people take from it. It's got to mean something about your company and reflect what you do. It's got to promise a quality, appeal to your target audience, communicate your message and transfer across all media, which means it's got to work across websites, business cards, banners, large format. What difference does your logo make? What do you gain from it? Well, there isn't an actual return on investment, but you don't know how many clients you've lost because your logo is not looking professional. It doesn't reflect your professionalism. Somebody who sees a blurry logo will not be impressed by your company because you haven't put the money in. You haven't invested in your company. So it's more recognisable. The logo, the more times that somebody sees your logo and associates, associates it with your business, the less time they have to see your whole company name. It's instant recognition. It indicates professionalism and it develops trust because people see your logo and then realise that that is the company they've already used and they can trust what you believe in. This is my branding wheel. It's all about the components of what makes up your brand. So your logo is the hub of your brand. It has to do all those things I've talked about. It has to be, it's all about colours and images, how you put all the fonts together, uh, your personality, uh, the appeal, I'm sorry, I can't read it upside down, um, customer service, and why, why you do things, and your customer perception. So. These are a few of the logos that I really, really like. FedEx is from Federal, Federal Express, is basically where it came from. And the little arrow between the E and the X, can you see it, is actually trademarked. Nobody is allowed to create a logo with that arrow inside it. Now when you see a van, you'll always see that arrow. Really clever. What do you mean you can't see it? I love that, absolutely love that. Um, Baskin and Robbins, there's 31 flavours. Yeah. Amazon is everything from A to Z. Yeah. The World Wildlife Fund I particularly like, it's a really clear image, it's all about the um, endangered species and it just says it all to me, it's really easy, a really, really nice logo. And the V&A is just beautiful typography. So they're a few of the ones that have inspired me. <coughs> Here's the ones not to be inspired by. <laughs> <laughs> Bad logos. <laughs> right. I'm not actually going to go through each one. But basically what's happened here yeah. is, is the designer... <laughs> not your work, is that? Uh, no, luckily. The designer has, has been only focused, I'll move on shall I, um, <laughs> uh, the designer has only been focused on what they want to achieve. They haven't looked at the negative images, the negative spaces and what the actual lines and the shapes make. Um, there's far worse out there believe me. Um, the, me the mega flicks is a typical typographical problem. People are not seeing what they're doing. They're thinking, but they're not seeing. What's that company on the box? Could you show what the business is on? <laughs> what is that company for? It's <laughs> Sunshine Sushi. Work that one out. So anyway. So basically what I'm going to do is just quickly run through the, um, the way I create a logo. <laughs> it's fi finding the images for the presentation, don't worry. So the way I actually put a logo together which represents your brand is I have a full deep conversation and um, over several coffees 
uh, I think Steph, we drank the coffee shop dry, did we not? Yes. And then you have a questionnaire. So the questionnaire covers your likes, your dislikes, what your aim is, what your message is, how you communicate, um, strap lines, anything you like, anything, uh, logos you like, logos you don't, colours you don't like, fonts, everything. So the questionnaire covers it completely. And then from then on, we then look at colour schemes. There's a great website called Design Seeds and you can go into it and you can pick a colour scheme that you like and then we can build your brand on those colours. It's easier than just saying, I want it blue. So there's too many blues out there. So in this instance, these are the colours that somebody's chosen for um, a branding that I'm about to begin. We then, I then look at all the typefaces. Sometimes people like particular typefaces, sometimes they hate them. I've never done a logo with Comic Sans, and I never intend to, um, but it may have its place. It's a well-renowned don't use font. So as you can see from the GJB, that's Gary's um, pest control, I started going through all the typefaces that might be appropriate for his business. He wanted something that was dependable, classic, something not jokey. So we go through that and then I decide which ones I like and then produce designs for him to look at. After, oh, after the questionnaire, something I meant to say, I do an online search. So I make sure that there is no other company in the local area with the same name. I check out the logos, just in case to see what the competitors are doing. Uh, we had a garage door company, and all you could have were these kind of square boxes of garage doors. Well, we didn't want to do that, so that was something to stay clear of. Um, Gary's pest control uh, branding, he didn't want a little rodent with beaky eyes going eh, 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 on it, so he wanted it professional. So things to stay away from, so we do an online search just to make sure there isn't anything similar out there. So I start then scribbling, so I do this over a couple of days. I start scribbling all bits and pieces down, ideas. I can be swimming and I'll get out of the pool and I'll scribble something down and build a whole load of designs and ideas, which I then have to transfer onto the Mac. So that's there. After that, I then supply the client with several different ideas. They go through them, they pick the colours, they pick the logos, the, the typefaces that they like, and we put them together and do round two. And then round three. <laughs> and then round four. And it can go on until the client gets exactly what they want in whatever colour that works for them and the typeface that works. After that, when it's finished, I then produce a spec sheet. This produces the logo in all its right colours. You get the RGB for the screen and websites. You get eight hex, hexadecimal <coughs> colours, which are also for websites. Some web designers like hexadec hexadecimal, don't they, Arhan? Yes. CMYK. Uh, which is the print colours and also the fonts that's used because if you ever want to use it somewhere else or somebody wants to match it then you know exactly what font you've used. Oops. So that's the, the spec. Here's a few logos that I've particularly, I've got particular stories to them, they're mine. Elspeth Bonds is a teacher of teachers so she teaches head teachers and senior management how to teach and stuff to do with the school. I wanted it to be more about a person. It didn't need to be the flat cap thing. She hated that. Um, it didn't want to be just like all the normal stuff that's on there about teachers. So we looked at how people think, how people are interacting with each other. And hopefully you'll be able to see that there's two faces interacting with tick, 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 um, cogs. cogs going round. And from a distance, it looks like an owl's face. Hopefully you'll see that. Um, <laughs> Chelmer Print. If Morris was here, he'd agree with me. For me and Morris, printing means four colours, CMYK. To the general people in the street, it means they want to print whatever they want in whatever colours. So it was looking at a grid system, because printing is very, very um, technical and it's specialised and it was different colours, different sizes of media, and spotlighting on those. So that came out of um, the, the designs, plus at the end of the day, the client's favourite um, artist was Mondrian. So it was perfect, it just worked really well. The Cedar Tree Advisory Service, 
I'll read this, I'm afraid, um, is based on the surname of Kydrowski. Because during the Second Crusade in Lebanon, a squire saved his knight from an attack by a lion. To reward the squire, the knight gave him land, which became the town of Kydrowski, or whatever. Uh, and Kydros means cedar tree. So the client wanted something to bring all that together, make it really personal to him. Face lace is a cosmetic product, and you will find that a lot of cosmetics like Miners, uh, Rimmel, MAC, they're all typographical logos. Uh, it's just the trend that they go through, and I think it's mainly because too many cosmetic products, what would you actually, what kind of icon would you use? So you do find that cosmetic products will be um, typographical. A lot of solicitors, accountants, and professional services will also be typographical. Um, it's just one of the ways. Sometimes they're not, but in general, and most professional services is kind of red, dark colours, blues, um, greys. That's the way. So here we have some of the logos from the group, you know, uh, Eric's Basement Masters. I couldn't find an original one, but it was very black and it was very solid and um, uh, quite old fashioned. So we upgraded that. It was all to do with what he does in the ground. And we changed colours to make them brighter, lighter and more attractive to a target market, which is predominantly female. I do believe that builders talk, most of their inquiries come from the female of the family because they want an extension, they want a conservatory, they want things painted. So Basement Masters was aimed more at the female side of the market. We have Claire's Active Management and Mediation, which had to be tied in together. So she got two logos for the price of one. Um, and she said bank, uh, Martin Williams, building business banking solutions. Fiona's FGS, where was she? <laughs> and Gary's and Steph's. And then Ladybird Services, which uh, most of you know Mandy. So, from your logo, you then have your hub to build your brand. So it appears on your website, it appears in all your business stationery, all your literature. It's promotional material, it must appear there. It must be consistent all throughout all these areas of your, your business and the literature that you supply. As part of the marketing mix, another plug for Morris. Here's a few ideas of what we've done for Ladybird Plumbing. So everything's the same colour, it's the same idea, you get the whole brand concept. It appears on social media so she can be identified. Oh, I've got to hurry up. Right. Um, no, all right then. Okay. All right, let me So creating literature with your logo and your branding, advertising, shop fronts, menus and everything to do with the actual business and promotional items and uh, literature, all completely following your same brand. I was going to tell you about the ANG brand, but I haven't got time. So, <laughs> it, well, I haven't got a few minutes. If you don't wrap up with that, why do you Yeah, right, okay, right. It took me a long time to rebrand from um, what was a very weak branding for me. The A is from uh, a signature that my dad taught me to do years ago which was all kind of, he used to try and teach me to do flowery writing. And it's also based on the Fibonacci spiral, which is called the Golden Spiral, which is all about mathematics and art and literature, uh, art and science. It all ties everything in together. The N is there for the middle bit, obviously. And the G is from Design Angel, which is one of my blog sites, and Google Plus, which is su suggesting social media. And the devil, well, the devil's in the detail. So that's... ANG, and it stands for Art and Graphics. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> 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 we have run out of time. Yeah, so sorry, I didn't time it. Pick up the room uh, uh, the questions or quotes while you work your mind down the please pick up the separately. I can ask you all to wrap Thank up you. and head back over to the main table. Yep.